This scary story revolves around Mr. Hero and Miss Cho's family. Due to bankruptcy, they had to move back to their hometown in order to make a living. The family moved in their late uncle's house which had been left abandoned for years. It was a spring morning with fresh air when they started a new life at their new home. The house had been deserted for a long time, however, Hiro and Cho felt blessed as they still had a place to stay. It wasn't an easy task to find a house this good without having to pay any cent, especially in these times of crisis. This was truly a blessing for Hiro and his family. No sooner had Chao stepped into the house than she venerated her late uncle's altar. She had left her hometown for a long time. As a result, she had a pang of guilt on her return. Cho and her family were just supposed to stay at this place for a short time and would leave as soon as they could afford a new house. The couple had two children, the older one named Dosu and the little one named Diane. That day, as the two were taking a shower, they suddenly heard their dad screaming. The younger child instantly got out of his bathtub and went to see his father. As Dosu turned off the faucet then ran behind him, Diane saw his dad pouring with sweat looking to the direction of the bed while being terrified. The child then turned his gaze at the bed and instantly got scared. His face turned pale. His eyes were wide open as he gasped in fear turned out that there was a snake that looked really scary on the bed. As Dosu arrived later, he brought himself a shovel and immediately rushed to the snake as soon as he saw it. The boy let out a scream as he lifted the shovel, then hit the snake on its head. Blood was spilled and the snake was killed right after that. Opposite to the exciting look on Dosu's face, Mrs. Chow felt extremely worried about her son's actions as she believed the presence of the snake was a sign of bad luck. Hiro used a stick to carry the dead snake outside. As everything seemed to have ended, what turned out next was completely out of their expectation. One afternoon, while the other two brothers were playing outside, it was unknown what Diane had witnessed yet he dripped with sweat and trembled uncontrollably. The boy was in utter bewilderment for a few seconds. He pointed to something and muttered, S Snake! Snake! Dosu was startled by what he heard. As he turned around he saw a snake stretching its jaws, revealing its sharp teeth which caused him to panic. Dosu reached to the shovel and hit the snake multiple times. As the snake was killed, he again used the shovel to brutally split it into small pieces. Right that moment, Miss Cho had just returned from the market. As Diane told her about the incident, her face became dark. She panicked. She wondered how could it be so coincidental to have so many snakes going into her house. Diane showed his mom the spot where his brother Dosu killed the snake. To Diane's amazement, the snake had mysteriously disappeared. The blood was still there but it was no longer to be seen. How could it be possible considered the fact that the snake had been chopped to pieces? Feeling shocked, Diane together with his mom and Dosu went to the spot where the snake had been killed. Diane was instantly scared to find out that the snake had gone. He stammered as cold sweat ran down his face. Sensing something terrible, the mother reassured her children and took them back to their rooms, then went to the altar room. Dosu had turned 15 this year. He was mature enough to have questions about his mom's bizarre behavior. He wondered why his mom said the snakes had something to do with her late uncle. Dosu told Diane to go to the next room to see what their mom was doing. Diane looked inside the altar room through a window and quickly felt strange. His mother was burning incense sticks. She looked anxious. Then the woman muttered something under her breath as she pleaded for forgiveness for her two children. But what happened next instantly amazed her. The incense stick had been broken in half without being physically affected. This must be a sign that indicated the spirits had been upset. Chao totally panicked to see the incense being broken in half. She bowed to the altar of her two late uncles, but it looked like they weren't approving of her pleading for forgiveness. The next morning a tragedy happened to the family. As it was still early in the morning, Diane unexpectedly let out a piercing scream. He rushed out of his room and went to his parents telling them that his brother was acting strangely. The couple terrified as they ran to check on their son 
and saw Dosu writhing painfully on his bed. Miss Chow rushed to her son at that moment. Dosu was feeling an immense pain throughout his whole body. Out of nowhere appeared deep cuts on both Dosu's arms and legs. There was even blood oozing out of the wounds. The couple hurriedly took Dosu to the nearest clinic. But even the doctors were frowning in confusion as they had never encountered a case of such a strange disease. Not only that, the cuts made Dosu wrestle with unbearable pain. It lasted longer than expected and the wounds had no sign of healing. Thinking the situation his child got in had something to do with evils, Hiro went to ask his mom for help. Hiro's mom then asked a shaman in the village to come to her house. A while later the shaman had finally showed up despite being a bit late. Hiro's mom quickly told the shaman to get inside and started telling him about her grandson's situation. The shaman said the incident needed to be handled soon as its consequences would be dangerous. He also worried that Dosu wouldn't be able to put up with the pain for longer than three days. Hiro's mom said a grandchild had killed two snakes as one of them had disappeared on that day. So she believed the snake had returned and taken revenge on her grandson. Having comprehended the whole story, the shaman told them to get him a gas stove as he needed to make amulets. Hiro's mom said she would have it ready for him immediately. The shaman said the snakes were actually incarnations of the spirits in the house and those who dared to kill them would definitely be punished. As the gas stove was on, the shaman took a bag of yellow papers and then burned them. Strangely, there was this envelope which didn't get burned even just a bit. A few minutes later, the shaman put the envelope inside two voodoo dolls. According to the shaman, the two snakes that had been killed were actually Mrs. Cho's late uncle and his wife, and Dosu had been punished for killing them. Now the shaman said he needed to make two voodoo dolls for the spirits to get inside, thus forgiving Dosu. Hiro and his mom couldn't hide the terror on their faces. They didn't expect Dosu would do such an awful thing. As the dolls and the amulets had been prepared, the shaman threw them in the fire to cast a spell. He then told Hiro to place the amulet bag onto the altar, and Dosu would instantly recover from his illness. What the shaman said turned out to be true as two days later, Dosu was totally free from sickness and became healthy again. This story serves as a message to tell all of us not to kill sacred animals like snakes or butterflies, and those who dare to kill them would be punished severely. <laughs>